Just like you need a calendar table to do analysis by year, month and quarter, you really need a timetable to do analysis by minute, hour, half hour buckets, etc. Now Power Query can help you build that timetable. I'll show you how. Let's go. So just to start with, this is what my data looks like. I've got units by date, time, even down to the second. And ultimately what I want to end up with is the ability to do something like this and pick a particular day and see the units broken down in 10 minute buckets or maybe I can drill up to see the the data in one hour buckets for that day. So the ability to group time and display it in incremental buckets makes sort of analyzing the data a lot easier. So we'll build this together. I'll show you, first of all, how to set up your fact table, your data in the first place, and then how to build your own timetable using Power Query. And ultimately, you then hook it up just like you would to the calendar. You have a separate lookup table, a dimension table for time, and away you go. Okay, so let's start with our data. We have date and time. Now you really need to split this apart into a date column and a time column. And probably one of the easiest ways to do that is highlight this date and time, go add column, time, time only. You've now got a nice time column, and I can change this one simply to a date and rename it as date. Okay, nice and simple. So in the next issue is that my time is at the second level, down to the second. Now I don't want that. I don't need it for my analysis to the minute is fine. And also it means that when I hook it up to my um, time table that we're gonna create, we also don't need that timetable to be at the second level. It can be at the minute, which is much sort of smaller and simpler. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of rounding this that I know of. The way I would probably go about this is to add a column. And first of all, I need to change this to a decimal number. That then gives me this standard option. And I can do the modulo. And as it says here, enter a number from which to find the remainder value. So if I, I want to do 1 over 1440, okay? But I, you can't put in 1 over 14. You can't do a divide in here. It just doesn't let you, okay? It won't let you do a 1 over. So if I'm going to do 1440, click OK, and then I simply edit my formula up here to do 1 divided by 1440, it essentially leaves the remainder so if I then take this column and deduct the remainder, it's going to chop, basically round everything up to the nearest minute. So I go standard, or actually you can go transform, and I can, oh, you can't go transform in there for two columns. Okay, add column, standard, subtract. This now, if I click on my time, is it rounded to the nearest minute? And if I change this back to time as well, Okay, you'll see that that's the one with the seconds, this is the one with the minutes. And it just chops it down to the nearest minute, okay? It's like a round down function. Now there's probably a simpler way of doing that. I don't need this modulo anymore, okay? I don't even need this time anymore. Before I get rid of it, here's the other way I'd do this. Um, I'm not sure it makes any difference performance-wise, but you can also do it this way. That modulo one is a little bit sort of mathematical and potentially confusing. So simply right click, add column from examples. Okay, this is what I want, 5.17 p.m. So 5.17 p.m. Oh, put the capitals in, enter. And it just turns text from time. Okay, I click okay. And then I turn this into a time and it's, sorted it for you without using the modulo. Um, let's just double check. Let's take those two and add another column that subtracts the times from each other. And are there any differences? No, nope. so both 
methods give me the same answer, as far as I'm aware. I haven't tested this out completely, but it seems to work. Okay, let me just go back and take out these, take out these, and I needed that one. Okay, so I don't need that, I don't need that. So I can remove those columns, and this is now my time to the minute. Beautiful. Okay, so my data is now sorted. Right, I now need to create a time table, which I can use to round up time to minutes, to hours, to half hours, etc. And I just hook it up then to this time to the minute column for doing my analysis. Okay, so let's go home and uh, new source, blank query. Right, so I want to create a list or a table containing every minute of the day from midnight to 11.59 p.m. So what you can do is equals, open the curly brackets, from 0 to 14.40, which is uh, 60 times 24. However, when you do this, you get an error. You need to do one less than that, okay? So 14.39. So that's the way sort of times are handled. So here we have it. We have one less row, but because it starts at zero, there are then all the minutes of the day in here. Click on the two table button. Click OK. OK, and this is my just my minute number. So I'm going to go whole number, minute number. So that's my big list of minutes. Okay, I now need to turn these minute numbers into actual minutes or times. Now, one represents a whole day. Um, so I need to do one divided by um, 1440, okay? So I'm just gonna go standard, divide under the add column tab, standard divide, okay, 1440, okay. That's now, should be if I turn this into a time, that's 12, 1201, 1202, and so on, all the way down to 1159. So this is my time to the minute. Okay, this is my column that I can hook up to my time-based um, table, my time data. Okay, then what do we want to analyze the data by? Do we want to bucket into five minute intervals, 10 minute intervals, whatever that might be? If I do an integer divide, so add column, standard, divide with an integer, okay, and put a five in there for five minutes. I then get these items here, okay, all roll up into category zero. Then these next five minutes are under one. These next five minutes are the second lot of five minutes and so on and so on. And if you needed to, you could always add a one if you wanted to nudge it up um, for each one. Okay, so, and rather than rename the column, I'm just going to call this um, five, five min buckets. Okay, um, let's do one for 10 minute buckets. So click, click back on here on minute number, standard divide integer, this time for 10. Okay, and this is 10 minute buckets. 10 min bucket. And last one, a 60 minute bucket. So back on here, the add column tab, divide integer. Okay, let's do 60 for the hour and rename this one hour bucket. Okay, well, we could just use those if we wanted to, but it'd be nice to show the times. So what do we do there? So I'm going to take my five minute bucket column and I'm going to go to my custom column button and call this my five minute time slot. Okay, I'm going to take my five minute bucket, multiply it by five and divide it by the 1440. And now this becomes, if I turn it into time, 
This becomes 12 a.m., 12.05, 12.10, 12.15. Then I'm just going to repeat that. I'll do it for the 10 minute and the one hour slot. So there we have our various time slots. So this is now my time table. Awesome. Okay, I've already got a calendar table that I pre-built. A little link to my video about the calendar setup will appear now. Also, there'll be links and also a link to download this file will be in the comments. Okay, so go check them out. Okay, home, close and apply. So now I just go into my model, my calendar is already hooked up, okay, from date to date. Time to the minute can hook up to time to the minute. There we go. So that's hooked up beautifully as well. And now I've already written a measure for number of units, okay, so that's already in there. And I'm simply going to go into here and say, right, this is number of units, and then go to my calendar and say by date. And then in this chart, I'm going to say number of units. And I could choose from my timetable, my uh, one hour time slot to start with. Okay. And then my 10 minute time slot underneath it. And then if I click on an item there, I can always then say, oh, actually, I want to see this by the next level down. And if I want to see, this is all grouped together, so you want to sometimes go to um, the drop down here and say show items with no data. So then if I click on this particular time, we see in the gaps as well. So there we go. A timetable, just like a calendar table, built in Power Query. Hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. Love getting your comments. Let people know about this channel. And I will catch you later.